Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's panel, Career and Life. Can you have it all? This is such an interesting question that I'm sure a lot of us are pondering on a daily basis. My name is Cecilia, and I'm working at one of the high-tech companies in the area as a manager and a mom of two. This is definitely a burning question that I want answered. Today's event is co-organized by A2C Leadership Group, Be the Change Foundation, Tsinghua alumni and Peking University alumni, Silicon Valley Cafe are also event partners. So today we have two amazing ladies who are ready to share their stories. In addition to being high power executives, they're also fun loving individuals, dedicated moms, and also active volunteers in the community. So I cannot wait to hear how they do it all. If there are any tips and tricks that you can share. Elizabeth and Angie. And today's session is meant to be highly interactive. So the prepare questions will take us through 5.30 or 5.40. After that, we're going to break out into two sessions so that you, everyone in the audience, will have a chance to ask your questions and have more intimate conversations with our panelists. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Angie to introduce yourself. Angie? Um, hi, everybody. First, I want to say Happy New Year to everybody. It is such an honor to be here. Um, um, what what uh, Cecilia wants me to do is, you know, just to introduce myself and tell me, tell uh, you all a little bit about my journey. Hi, Dave. How are you? Happy, happy uh, New Year to you. So I have like two slides um, to share a little bit. And hold on one second. Let me just show that. All right. Hope you'll be able to see it. Um, so I'm not going to read through my job description and everything, where I came from, uh, what are the, some of the company that I've worked with. So you can read through that. But I def definitely want to say that I'm really, really honored um, that I have, uh, you know, my face in Times Square. And actually, I did a lot of opening and closing ceremony, and with VT as well uh, last year, um, actually in 2019. Um, I think I'm really proud to say that I'm a, a mother of two kids and they are all, uh, one is still in college, another graduated and worked already. And my parents live close by in Silicon Valley. I work in New York. At this moment, um, I'm actually sitting in, in a house in California. So um, I call myself as a mother of two. I love I loved dancing, listening to podcasts and reading a lot of books and uh, love to learn anything, a lot of things from all of you as well. Let's see if I get to the next slide, oops. Um, yeah, um, so I usually like to think about my career is a journey, it's never be just one thing. It's a lot of up and downs. Um, I've never know where, um, it's not like some of the people know that, okay, I'm going to be the CEO, I'm going to be CT, I'm going to be something. It really, the life really took me to where I am now. I'm still in the journey of myself. So of course, um, you know, some of the brand you see, you know, schools that went to Tsinghua and I dropped off college, actually I came to the United States and went to Santa Barbara for, for grad school. You know, definitely, I mentioned about a few key events, getting married, have babies, and uh, getting the word for uh, women, um, uh, actually, the, the Women of Influence, uh, or the Silicon Valley of Influence Award. But I have a lot of down, you know, actually, one of my first promotion to be director, I got demoted uh, within a week and lost opportunities and things like that. Um, and, and later on, I... Um, definitely featured in Forbes, and uh, I help um, Amex to win JD Power, and et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of highlight is over there in my career, but actually what really made me to really think about the key events of my journey, and it includes some of the really life events, such as marriage, uh, such as having kids, and such as having a failure and what I have learned out of it. And I would really highlight one of the really, I would say turning point where um, I felt like my career suddenly opened up is when 
I met my mentor, uh, my mentor and coach who happened to, um, you know, her name is Judy Lane. And I met her through um, a conference, almost just like this. I went to a, an event and that event was hosted in eBay and it was a presentation by George Mumford. If you don't know about George Mumford, he is a, a mindfulness coach uh, for Phil Jackson. If you don't know who Phil Jackson is, he actually coached all the, the sports uh, stars in, you know, in the whole world. And I was really lucky to ask a question about uh, being a woman in tech and a mother of two, what is it about you know my life journey? How can I be more successful? And George Mumford said, uh, Angie, I don't know how I can answer the question, but I know somebody can. So he referred me to his mentor, who is uh, Judy Lane, and Judy Lane and I became friend. And Judy Lane really inspired me and helped me empower me to say that I can do so many things and I have a lot of things to offer to the world. And starting from then, um, I started to look for different opportunities where I'm still a devoted mother, a devoted wife and daughter, but I look for different opportunities instead of looking at the shortcoming of myself. And instead I would say, what can I do to help? And how do I help? Whether it's business partner, whether it's product vision, my friends, et cetera. I really felt that that really helped me to remove a lot of roadblock and help me to gain a lot of confidence. So with that, I'm going to turn back to, uh, back to Cecilia. And you know, I definitely like to hear more about uh, Elizabeth. And actually Elizabeth can talk to you a little bit about how we met. We have so many things in common that we didn't uh, even know at the beginning. Okay, all right. Uh, let me share one slide as well. And uh, I have to apologize for some of the audience that uh, uh, somehow, even though we have a $500, uh, 500 uh, uh, um, attendees uh, capability, somehow uh, Zoom, uh, somehow Zoom kind of uh, kept us at the 100. You know, we try to figure out uh, what exactly going on. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me first share my screen and I'll figure out that one uh, uh, later on. Okay, you know, I apologize for the people who cannot get in. And uh, let's see, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, I guess you can see yeah. my screen, okay. Yes. I'll put the presentation mode. Okay, all righty. Uh, so Angie uh, said we have a lot of things in common. You know, the first time I met Angie was in 2010-ish. Angie invited me to a networking event and actually asked me to speak to a group of uh, um, a, a Scott, uh, like Boy Scouts. And then, um, and then I found out that Angie and I, uh, we share something in common. We live in the same city. Our kids, both of our kids were attending same schools same class uh, in the middle school and the high school. And another thing that later on we discovered that we, we, we had in common, when we both were little, you know, our parents were sent to uh, small cities in, in the middle of China. And actually we spent uh, like, a, probably we had a two years of overlap in our childhood, even though we never met. This is why we joked that like, maybe we were the sisters uh, separated in <laughs> at birth time. So, and because we share a lot of other things in common, such as dancing and hiking and the community uh, contribution, you know, and, but there's something that is different to that. Uh, uh, I graduated from Beijing University. We were neighbors, like uh, Tsinghua and the Beijing University were neighbors. And then I have a one, a two boys and the two boys, same age as Angie's boys. So uh, uh, another thing we probably had something in common, we both probably came to United States with a very little money. Uh, I said $45. And uh, I went on and changed my major from uh, space physics to computer science. And, and I, and, 
you know, one thing I was really lucky, I met my mentor in 1990. So I had a very good career. So within two years of graduation, I was promoted into manager at IBM. Within 10 years, I became a C-level at the NASDAQ a public company. So I was really, really lucky in that way. And one thing that, uh, um, that I started doing in 2005, I started to teach and mentoring. And then in 2011, I started to have my own class at the Stanford Continuing Education and teaching um, uh, young professionals and uh, working professionals about how to develop uh, their career. In the next following year, I published a book uh, with my mentor of 30 years and Pat Zimmerman, the myth of the promotion, 10 steps to a successful career. And then another thing is um, I went on, became a CTO of a BMC software, and uh, later on I went to Thai Thailand. And uh, the reason I went to Thailand because I was quite impressed. Uh, first, I was surprised by Angie's move to New York. And I visited to Angie many, many times, and we went to quite many shows and the talks. And I found out the Silicon Valley is not the only world. <laughs> and it says beautiful weather and a great talks, great friends, but there are something very different in the world. So when the CP Group approached me, I went to Thailand for you know over a year. And one of my friends joked at me, she said, you went a long way to find yourself. Uh, the self is uh, to really realize what matters the most for life, uh, like family, um, you know, like my community. So this is why I came back to Silicon Valley. And I think uh, I'm doing the A to C Academy, really mentoring uh, working professional. I found out that this is my true love. And this is quite an interesting journey, even though I drew a, a straight line, but I, actually I think Angie's uh, weaving line is more of a, a truth because from the career point of view, from the size and the title of everything, it looks to everybody I had a straight line. But uh, internally, the struggle, the change, uh, the challenges, the family cha challenges, everything, it makes, uh, is kind of like big waves uh, from the inside. So even though outside is a very smooth, very straight line, uh, like almost like the, um, uh, I would call the textbook, uh, perfect career. Anyway, uh, I want to turn the stage back to Cecilia. And then, you know, um, and in the meanwhile, I'll see if I can figure out how to increase the, uh, the capacity to more than 100. Okay, you guys go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Angie and Elizabeth. Let me start off by asking both of you a career question. Um, you're, you have bo both achieved great career success. So can you give an example of the skill that you need to acquire along the way to perform at the next level as you move up the organization? And how did you learn that skill? So um, I, I think this is a really hard question. I think uh, the reason the hard question, I, I'm not sure there's a one answer to it. I think, as I said, you know, a career is a journey or life is a journey. On the way, you do one step at a time. You actually learn along the way uh, at different times. So at this time uh, where I'm now, what I will really like to contribute to a few things. You know, if we're talking about career, I will say career, it's, it's a three C, okay? Um, it's a C, start with, uh, start with a curiosity, which means that you actually want to have a career. It doesn't mean that everybody should have a career. Everybody want need to have a career. And first, you start with if your curiosity. Second, it's really about the courage. And the third is about continue continuously. So, you know, the, the thing is really about continuous learning and be curious and being comfortable for being uncomfortable. And that's really, you know, keep it going one step at a time and, and enjoy that kind of journey. That's so true. Elizabeth, do you have something to add? Yeah. Just an example of a skill that you need to learn along the way. 
Oh, I learned quite a bit. Even last year, I got the Amazon um, sort of certified. And I, I felt like um, um, almost every day I knew, I learned new skills. Uh, for example, cloud uh, certification. And a lot of people think I was crazy to take the test. It was quite challenging. And also every day I learned how to do better presentation, to do video editing. And now I'm in the startup mood. I basically uh, learned how to do many, many things and learned the, the skills in terms of sales and marketing, the areas that I feel like I'm, is, is my weakness. And, but in, in order to be a good CEO, I really need to be proficient in sales and marketing and to try to really fine tone my messages and as well as uh, uh, you know, many other uh, skills. So it's a continuous learning process. You know, as my mentor said, the day you stop learning is the day you start dying. So I don't want my career to die. I want to live to my fullest, fullest potential. That fullest potential is really supported by uh, a lot of learning, a lot of um, uh, you know, self-challenge. You know, just like winner always compete your, with yourself. I need to compete with myself by improving myself and make me a better person each day. Yeah, that's exactly. All. Yep, well said. Okay, so my next question is that technology is ever evolving and we have no shortage of buzzwords floating around. As a leader in this field, how did you stay current with technology trends and make decisions about what to invest in the future? Mm. Um, it, it, it's, I think Elizabeth talked about the cloud certification. I, I'm really proud that I got my official, I'm an AWS uh, practitioner certified, and I also got AI certified. All of those are not really being required by my job, by the way. Um, and, I, and, and when we actually work on the uh, UI, I did um, definitely uh, play with React um, and uh, React Native. Um, so it's not that I need to get to the deep of things. I think it's actually very important for me to understand some technology. But the thing is that um, the deep down, uh, of course, I think I'm engineering by heart, also by training. So I, I had an engineering background. So it's always to me is I always ask about why. It's the first principle is very important, even though you don't know things, you know, listen to others. And, and do a little bit. I'm, I'm not an extrovert. And if I'm extroverted, I really like to talk to people, learn from people, but I'm sort of in between. I'm more of an introverted, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, ambiverted, like in between. So I like to read myself and do a little bit digging and then talk to people and collaborate and learning from others. And that kind of a mix uh, really, helped really helped me on that. Great. Elizabeth? Yeah, I don't think I have anything else to add. I think that the trend, uh, technology trend, is something that uh, I learned from analysts. And also, I, I have a few friends that uh, were my uh, expert uh, that I learned from. And then NG is one of them. And NG sometimes sent me great articles. And I really enjoy reading them. Another time is to learn from uh, uh, people that who are truly expert on LinkedIn and many other sources. And, and I, one thing I would like to add is, you know, the most important thing, the most expensive thing is the time of our life. It's our life. So uh, if we try to get a lot of uh, secondary um, opinions or learning from the people who couldn't even figure out, uh, who just, and I think we are wasting our time more importantly, we're wasting our life. So when I try to learn, I always learn from the best. And whether it is from uh, the university professors or from the trusted sources, I always learn and pay for the best resources and, then, and to learn. Because that's something that you can accelerate your learning and get rid of the confusion. Uh, that's something I would like to uh, suggest to share with it. 